Welcome to another Tempo Storm Meta Snapshot Breakdown. The Dark Moon Fair has been around for a while and led to several new archetypes making an appearance in the meta. A lot of the older archetypes are still relevant in the current meta, and in fact, some are even leading the meta. There hasn't been a huge amount of change since our previous meta snapshot, but some new decks have risen up in the tier list. It'll be interesting to see if the 2020 World Championship will impact the meta at all, but only time will tell. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the top decks in the meta. If you're interested, interested in seeing the full report, head on over to TempoStorm.com to view the rest. As always, if you enjoy this type of content, be sure to leave a like rating and to subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date with all of our Hearthstone content. We have plenty of content coming over the next few weeks, and we wouldn't want you to miss any of it. Without further ado, let's jump into Tier 1. Leading off Tier 1 in this Tempo Storm meta snapshot is Soul Demon Hunter. This archetype has been taking over the ladder and is only stopped by a few archetypes. If you've queued games lately, you've definitely ran into Illidan and his army of soul fragments. This deck has been slowly climbing up since the release of Dark Moon Fair and continues to prove that it is not only a contender, but is in fact the best deck in the game. It's likely it'll be nerfed following the World Championship considering how many people have taken to complaining about the archetype's power level. Only time will tell where Demon Hunter will end up, but until then it will dominate the meta. Soul Demon Hunter excels against Highlander Hunter and Tempo Demon Hunter, as you can stave off their pressure while bursting them down with your weapons. When it comes to bad magic, Matchups, Soul Demon Hunter tends to struggle against a Bomb Warrior, as they can gain enough armor to stall for the bombs to finish off the game. Next up in Tier 1 is ETC Warrior. This archetype previously was the top deck in the meta, but fell slightly due to Demon Hunter's prevalence. ETC Warrior is still a fantastic deck, but struggles slightly if players are adding tech cards in for it. Regardless, this OTK deck is still a ladder staple and sees quite a bit of play at High Legend. Some players are calling for this archetype to be nerfed due to how uninteractive the combo can feel, but realistically, it probably isn't broken enough to justify one. ETC Warrior has a few polarized matchups, with it finding a fantastic one against aggressive decks like Tempo Demon Hunter or Evolve Shaman, thanks to the infinite armor gain. On the flip side, the deck has a nearly unwinnable matchup against Control Priest due to how the Priest can simply not play any cards. This matchup tends to require the Priest to mess up in order for the Warrior to find a win. Next up in Tier 1 is the previously mentioned Tempo Demon Hunter. This archetype is fast out of the gate and can run away with the game in a matter of turns. Tempo Demon Hunter has slowly arisen and made a name for itself on ladder, and we don't expect it to go away anytime soon. This Demon Hunter archetype has a favorable matchup against mid-range decks such as Pure Paladin or Bomb Control Warrior. Usually you can aggressively take the board and then won't lose it until they die. As for bad matchups, decks with removal and armor gain can feel horrendous to play against, such as either ETC or Enrage Warrior. The last deck we'll be taking a look at in Tier 1 is Secret Rogue. This archetype is incredibly consistent, and the addition of Swindle and Foxy Fraud have only boosted the archetype to an even higher power level. It's no secret that this archetype can pull off some crazy swing turns, but the frequency at which it happens feels unreal. If your opponent ever leaves up a questing Hanar or lets the Edwin connect, the game will usually end shortly after. The biggest issue this archetype has is one that Rogue has faced for years, which is how bad their hands can be at times. There's nothing quite as defeating as an opening hand with two backstabs and two preps. Secret Rogue fares best against decks that are vulnerable to large threats, such as Pure Paladin or Control Priest. This deck does have a really rough time against some of the more aggressive ladder decks though, with Evolve Shaman and Highlander Hunter proving to be threats. The decks within Tier 2 are all strong and consistent decks when in the right hands, but are a bit weaker than Tier 1 decks. These can all be piloted to rank 1 legend by the best players, but will be a bit harder to find results with than their Tier 1 counterparts. As usual, we're going to take a look at the top performing decks within this tier, but before we do we just want to remind you to head on over to TempoStorm.com to view the meta snapshot in its entirety. Leading off this tier is Evolve Shaman. This archetype is the king of swing turns, and if you've laddered, you've been on the receiving end of it. What started out as a gimmicky archetype has quickly become a nightmare for many, as they are greeted with bog spine knuckles and desert hair galore. Evolve Shaman will have its fair share of blowout games, but it can also be punished severely if it doesn't draw its weapon. This deck has a solid matchup spread, but shines against decks that struggle with the explosive turns, such as Control Priest. Its worst matchup comes from decks that can easily wipe the board time and time again, such as ETC Warrior. The second deck in this tier is Enrage Warrior. This archetype is very powerful, but hasn't received much time in the spotlight thanks to being eclipsed by ETC Warrior. This archetype is also insanely difficult to pilot, and will reward the best players much more than an average one. Tempo Warrior has been around since the introduction of Risky Skipper, and continues to abuse that card while it climbs to the top. This archetype can blow certain decks out of the water 
water and preys on aggressive decks like Tempo Demon Hunter. It does have a fairly difficult time against Libram or Pure Paladin though, as they will just beat you down relentlessly and prevent you from busting them thanks to their healing and taunts. The last deck that we'll be taking a look at today in this meta snapshot breakdown is Highlander Hunter. This archetype is seeing a decent amount of play at the World Championships and is a pretty consistent one despite the one-off trade-off. This archetype has a really aggressive curve and will often catch opponents off guard. If you manage to make it to the late game, cards like Dino Tamer Bran will let you close it out with ease. Highlander Hunter has been seeing a lot of play, and if you're a fan of Rexar, we suggest checking it out. Its best matchup comes from decks like Control Priest and Bomb Warrior, which struggle with the consistent pressure. Its worst matchup is against the decks that can either fight for board as aggressively, such as Tempo Demon Hunter, or ones that can nearly ignore it altogether, such as Enrage Warrior. While the expansion hasn't been out for too long, the meta has finally begun to settle down and players are flocking towards the best decks, opposed to continuing to experiment. While Darkmoon Fair wasn't the most powerful set in terms of cards, its impact on the meta has been clear. We expect the meta to remain roughly the same until either the mini set is released or until we see a set of balance changes. Only time will tell where things shall end up, but we're excited to keep exploring the fair every day. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let us know in the comments below what decks you've been having the most success with so we can check them out. Until next time. Yeah.